As you can see, it's another beautiful day in paradise, so I'm going to put the sunshade up. Next job, carpeting and trimming. Now this is where we have to really think about the details because we don't want to carpet anything and then have to undo it all because we've forgotten to put something in. And also I need to think about where the carpet's going to go. So as you can see, I've got all these plywood panels left over. That's just come out the back of the transporter. We'll keep that for a little while because it might come in useful. But I need to think about which ones I'm going to use, which ones I'm not going to use because the metal frame will need carpeting before I do those panels. So I've got that to think about as well. I've also um, got to think about my lights, where I'm going to run those, because I'll need to run any cables that are associated with them. I think on this one, I'm going to run a strip light all the way along this rail. I'll come up with a design for that later. The rest of it, I'm just going to surface mount, because you don't need to put cables inside walls on these vans, because there's so much furniture and stuff that you can hide it behind. The way I like to do it is panel it all out, carpet it all out, and then surface mount any electrics. That means if you ever want to change anything, it's all easy to get to, to repair it or replace it or whatever it is you want to do with it. This cloth is a four-way stretch cloth. So when you get to these moldy bits, you can push it in all sorts of directions to make it fit the contours of your van. Right, we've got to turn this back bit into something that I can carpet. I'm going to have to join up with these side rails and somehow make that face flush so that it looks neat when it's carpeted. Yeah, tricky little bit of boxing, but I think it should do the trick. Well, my outside workshop is working very well, except the water's slowly encroaching into my workspace. <laughs> Might be time to call it quits today. <laughs> Although it's tested the pop top roof and that's holding up very well. No water whatsoever. There, that's better, we just needed a cup of tea. Come and have a look at this little detail here, I'm quite pleased with it. There was the old ridges from the roof that's under there, and I didn't want to carpet that because I just thought it didn't look very tidy. So I've made a little bit of plywood to cover over the top of that. And then it's got my little bit of plywood underneath there to make it all smooth. Quite pleased with that. I think we best shift that knife though, because we don't want any holes in the canvas. We've got a little bit of glue where I overshot, but that'll clean off with a bit of thinners. But that'll do for today, I think, because I need to tidy up, because the place is a pigsty. So tomorrow we'll get that carpeted on this side and it should start to look quite smart. So I'll see you in the morning. She's a bit fresh this morning, so I've cracked open the old deer stalker. Been through a lot together, me and this deer stalker. Okay, so after a lot of faffing around yesterday, I couldn't quite get the finish I wanted on the carpet to the glass. I should have carpeted it first, wrapped the carpet over the edge, and then fitted the windows to trap the carpet. But I couldn't do that, because if you remember, I still had the pop top to fit and I didn't want all my van carpeted while I was doing the pop top. So what I've decided, I've come up with an idea that I think is probably better. I'm going to use the old plywood floor and cut some frames out that fit into the recess. That'll give me a nice neat finish and it'll also give me the added benefit of having a piece of plywood in there that I can fix my curtain rails to when I come to making those. So we'll get on with making these frames, get those fitted in and we can get the carpet finished off. We've got, we're coming away from the wall a bit, we've got five feet. It's not parallel or square. Awesome. Okay. That's right. We can do that. I can do that. 
So we need to cut it out to that shape and then cut the inner shape to that shape. So we've got some clever measuring to do. Gun saves me hours. Boom, there we go. One carpeted window frame for a Volkswagen transporter. Okay, so that's got our frames made. Now I need to make some little alley brackets that are going to hold it onto the van. There we go, that's the front one in. The one side effect that uh, I've just noticed is now I've not got to worry about finishing this detail off just here, where the door meets the rubber seal, because I've got to finish on the edge of my frame. So there we are, every cloud and everything. That's them done, getting fitted to the van. In a small workshop, it's quite useful to have dual purpose things. I found a second purpose for the pop top wheelbarrow wheel. I brought the old pup in the van today because I think I've picked the wettest month on record to convert a camper van and she was a bit bored inside so. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't like screw caps so I'm painting the screw heads. And the trouble with screw caps is eventually they usually get knocked off. Right, last carpeting job. I just need to trim out this roof cutout where the headliner meets the carpet. So what I need is a material that I can bend into shape and form a trim to fit around all these funny angles. And I've got just the thing in mind. And that's why we don't chuck anything away until we're finished. No fancy metal bending tools on this channel. Just a hammer and a vice and beat the shit out of it until it conforms to the shape that I want. Right, there we are. That's muscled that into some sort of useful form. All we're gonna do now is carpet it and that should make a nice little trim for around the edge of the roof. So there we go, that's the carpeting done. There'll be a link up here somewhere, a link to a 360 video where you can have a look at all the details of the carpeting. So click on that if you wanna have a look. Next job is the diesel heater going in. I've got to drill a hole through the wall to put the inlet and the exhaust for the heater. So if you've got this far, thanks again for watching. I do appreciate it. Click subscribe, click the bell icon for notifications, leave us a comment, leave us a thumbs up and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.